Today we have got some reserve list cards, we have got some promo cards, and we have some staples from Modern's past. Let's see what we got. Welcome back everybody to the MTG Collection Update Series. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. For those of you who don't know, this is the Binder Update Series. So this is the series where we are taking a full 480 card 12 pocket binder and filling it out with some of our favorite cards that we enjoy collecting. Now there is really no prerequisite for what gets added to the binder other than it's a card that I want to collect. We cannot duplicate, so we don't have anything that's like we got two of the same card or anything like that. So we get to see 480 unique cards at the end of this series. Now we're also tracking the value of the binder as a whole, and so we share that at the end of each episode as well as just the value of each individual card. Worth noting as well that if you are collecting any kinds of magic cards or really anything in general, feel free to share it in the comment section below. I think collecting is something that we can all share and enjoy together. And with that, I want to see what you guys are collecting. Maybe it's a card for a deck that you recently picked up, or maybe you opened a pack and got just a bomb hit and you want to share it here. Please feel free. The comment section is yours. Now, without further ado, we are going to jump right into the 12 new cards. And we, like I said, have a huge variety today. So let's see what we got. All right, guys, so here we are with our very first card, and I told you we had some reserve list cards. This is not the only one, but this is the first. It's Exalted Dragon, kind of an interesting one back from Exodus. And again, uh, this isn't a card that I really know that much about. I don't think it's high on the reserve list uh, uh, value spectrum. However, uh, one of the things I liked about it was that it's just one of Magic's historic pieces, and I think that's why I tend to go for the reserve list cards much more than the actual value side. Uh, now, obviously, I like adding value to the collection. It's a great thing to do. But uh, truthfully, I think one of the more important pieces is kind of looking back at the history of magic, seeing how far we've come, seeing what constituted a good creature in particular back in the day and what really kind of excels that uh, in today's day and age, thanks to power creep, things like that. So it's really just a fascinating piece to me. It's a great historic piece. It is reserveless. Like I said, not the only one. Uh, in this week's video, but truthfully, it's just a really cool piece of Magic's history, and I love that. Uh, and so I know, um, you know, some of these older cards don't always have a ton of value or they're not always all that useful. That's okay. I don't think it's always about that. I think for me, it's that historic moment of like, wow, this was something that was printed in Exodus back in way back in the day uh, when Magic was really first kind of starting to get its legs. And I think that's really, really special. Uh, I think the other reserve list card is actually way older. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, next up, whoops, oh no, there we go. Just revealed so many cards, it's fine. Uh, our first modern staple. Uh, so this is Cryptic Command. This is the original Lorwyn printing of Cryptic Command. Very nearly got the, uh, the is it the game day promo? The full art foil uh, textless version. Uh, absolutely love that version. That may see, see, uh, see some light of day later on in the binder, but uh, truthfully, I just really love Cryptic Command. I think it's a phenomenal card. It's been reprinted a handful of times, which does help to drive that price down. So it's a little bit easier to pick up now than it used to be. Uh, but it's one of these staples for blue control style decks. Uh, instant speed, four mana, does a lot of things. Counter spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand, tap all creatures the opponent's control, or draw a card. Get to choose two of those when you cast this spell. Uh, very, very good value for mana. Uh, and the fact that it just replaces itself means that you will always at least have, you know, some kind of play with this that is valuable to you. Uh, and so, uh, generally speaking, this is just one of my favorite uh, uh, counter spells in the game. Uh, I do love the modern format. I know we don't really get to see a lot of the modern format anymore, which is a real shame in my opinion, but um, I watched so much of the modern format. We'll see some of these other cards are actually modern staples as well. Uh, some of which got banned <laughs> um, and for good reason. Uh, and that format is just really powerful, really fun to watch, but it's not overly powerful like vintage or uh, legacy in the sense that, you know, you you still get to play the game even if it's only for a few turns. Uh, I think in Vintage, as much as I love it, you could certainly win on turn zero. There's like weird things that you can do there to kind of finish the game quickly. Uh, that's much more of a chess match where I think, you know, modern, closer to a chess match than a checkers match, but not really, you know, not really on the same level. And so it's really interesting to watch. 
Next up, uh, a card that I honestly just love, uh, Tamiya the Moon Sage. This was the very first Tamiya card that we saw in Magic uh, back in Avacyn Restored, I believe. Uh, just a really fun tempo-y Planeswalker. Uh, truthfully, I've already got one of these, but I would love to pick up a full playset. I think this is my second now. Um, and I just love Tamiya, to be honest. Uh, there's really never been a Planeswalker card of hers that I've just outright disliked. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think back and, and seeing if there was anything that really stuck out, but even the latest one, the completed version, uh, absolutely phenomenal. One of the most exciting cards, in my opinion, from Kamigawa for the potential that it represented. Uh, this was just a really solid mono blue, the Moon Sage. So uh, this really gave a lot of tempo we plays, things like that, to in particular things like cube. Really love the cube draft style. Uh, and so to have a card like this in the cube gives that mono blue deck along with the cryptic commands, things like that, um, a little bit of interaction, a little bit of tempo we playing, and then that allows you to uh, hopefully take over the game with those controlling elements later on. So truthfully, just a really fun card. I've always loved Tamiyo. There's really not much more to it. Uh, I just think she's a really cool Planeswalker. All right, our other uh, reserve list card for today is Grave Robbers. Uh, very interesting old card, I believe from the dark, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, really just pick this up for the fact that it was a reserve list card, for the fact that it is a piece of Magic's history, uh, and I really enjoy that. Now, there is another piece to this that I love more so than uh, we saw on the uh, Exalted Dragon, which is the artwork. Uh, really love the artwork on this for some reason. I love that uh, off-kiltered kind of perspective. I think that's really unique. Uh, maybe not, maybe less unique and more just cool. Uh, and so I just really like that. I think it's a really special card. Again, it's reserveless. It's a piece of Magic's history. It's something that I think, um, you know, Magic players nowadays, if you're new to Magic, and this is by no means a criticism, it's just an observation, uh, I think a lot of players don't have the opportunity to look back at a lot of the like original cards unless they are things that they are looking like Black Lotus. Everybody knows what Black Lotus is, but not a lot of people might know what Grave Robbers is because you don't play with it. It's not a great card, but it is a reserve list card and it is a piece of Magic's history. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, and so for me, I really like that. Uh, it's, it's a special thing to, to be able to add these kinds of things to the collection. Uh, and so for that, very, very happy. Uh, I believe that's all the reserve list cards today, but uh, we are jumping into a promo, which is a Scourge version of Soul Collector. I believe the only version. Uh, just awesome. Uh, this is the pre-release uh, version, so I don't know how well you can see it, but there is a little date right here. Uh, you also have the actual um, the actual logo of the set in the uh, text box there. Truthfully, as you guys know, I am a huge fan of promos. Uh, this is just one of those cards that happened to come up on the random search. I was like, ooh, yeah, okay. I, I like that a lot. Uh, this is not the only promo we have this week, uh, and it's a really cool one. Uh, it has the morph mechanic, uh, which if anybody doesn't know, again, this is one of those mechanics that uh, we've seen since since this time in Magic's history, since Scourge. Uh, but it never, uh, to my knowledge at least, it was never like a huge like game-winning mechanic. It was just a really cool mechanic uh, where you got to play the card face down and then flip it up uh, given that morph cost. And so there's a little bit of interesting stuff that you can do, a little bit of sneaky stuff you can do, which I like. Uh, and so for that, I thought it was just a really cool card. The artwork is beautiful on this as well. Really, really just menacing, if that makes sense. And so for me, this was just a really cool addition. All right, moving back to modern staples. This one, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your uh, perspective, is banned in modern. This is Splinter Twin. This is what warped one of the cards that warped uh, the entirety of the modern format with Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that is an infinite combo where you can tap it. Uh, it comes into play as a copy of the initial creature. Uh, so, uh, I better explain this a little better. So if you have a Pestermite or a Deceiver Exarch, when it comes into play, you can untap another permanent you control. I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, and so what you do is attach the Splinter Twin to the Deceiver Exarch or the, or, or the Pestermite, tap it, create a token that is an exact copy of it, which untaps the original. And then you can repeatedly do that as many times as you would like. All of the tokens have haste and they get exiled at the beginning of the next end step. So the idea is you attack in with all of them and immediately win the game. 
Uh, absolutely ridiculous combo. Very, very easy to get off as well because Deceiver Exarch and Pester might both have flash, uh, and so you're basically able to throw those out at any time. Uh, so it's a little bit ridiculous. It was definitely a very overpowered deck in the modern format, but I loved it. Uh, and so for me, this is a really cool pickup because I actually only needed one more of these to pick up the full playset. I've already got three in my collection. This is a new one for me, so I'm real or a, a, a new completed playset for me and I'm really stoked about that so I love Splinter Twin I uh, I get why a lot of people don't um, but it's a very powerful card a very cool card and again great for cube as well all right moving back to stronghold we have hermit druid uh, one a green and for a 1-1 one, one. reveal cards from the top of your library until uh, you reveal a land card put that card into your hand and all the revealed cards into your graveyard there are a lot of combo potentials with this. Think about how many cards you could be putting into your graveyard if you build your deck around a card like this. Uh, certainly a very powerful one. I do really, really love this card. The artwork is also just super cool in my opinion. I don't know why, but I really love it. Uh, it's just a really powerful card. We've seen combos with cards like this uh, quite a bit. I think it's a really fun one again, potentially in cube, depending on how you build your cube. Uh, but think about throwing, you know, some major reanimator pieces into your graveyard and then being able to just pull them back out uh, with a with a true reanimate spell, which costs one mana. Like this, this is a very good, potentially hugely powerful card uh, that enables quite a bit. And so for that reason, I do really love it. Uh, never had the opportunity to play with it. This is the first one that I've ever picked up, but I am very excited for it. And I think it's a really sick card. So I'm happy to add it to the collection. All right, uh, I said we had a little bit of everything, and we certainly do. This is the secret layer version of Thraxa Mundar. Mundar? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, truthfully, this came up on the random search. Um, I knew they did like the heavy metal, quote unquote, version of certain cards, uh, and I thought this was just a cool card. <laughs> I don't really have a better reason than that. Um, I'm not a big commander player, and I know this you know, could potentially be a commander kind of card. I, I don't play commander, uh, and so truthfully, I didn't get it for the playability. I got it because it was really cool. That's it. This is the second, I think the second secret layer uh, card that we added to the binder. I think the first one was literally week one. It was Teferi's Puzzle Box. Uh, and so this is only the second in the binder as a whole. I'm expecting we'll probably have a couple more, but just a really cool card. I love that heavy metal version. We'll, we might get some other uh, heavy metal versions of these cards uh, later on in the binder because I just think they're awesome. All right, the next two are actually both going to be swords. We've got Sword of Hearth and Home up first. This is the etched foil version, and it's an absolutely stunning card. I love the swords. Uh, I believe I have all of the original swords in the original printing. Uh, and truthfully, anytime they, they make a new one, I just love to pick them up. Even the, uh, was it the Unstable Swords of Dungeons and Dragons, which was just a ridiculous one. Uh, lots of really cool stuff to do with these swords. They make great cube additions. They're very powerful cards, generally speaking. I would suggest these newer ones are not quite as powerful as the original swords, of course, but uh, I still think they're very good, and truthfully, they're they're comparable in different scenarios, and I think that has a lot to do with it. So I wouldn't necessarily want to compare them, um, but I think the originals are certainly, in general, a little more lucrative and powerful. Uh, regardless, very powerful card. Obviously, Hearth and Home is the first one here. We do also have uh, Sinew and what is this? Uh, street Steel, Steel, Sinew and Steel, uh, which is the pro red or pro pro black and red. Deals combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target planeswalker and one target artifact. Again, a great example of a really awesome card, a really powerful card, but only given certain scenarios. Uh, but it is the foil etched version, the same as the Sinew and Home, uh, or excuse me, <laughs> Hearth and Home. Wow. Uh, and again, just love the artwork. This might be one of my favorites. Uh, just that beautiful like red sun in the background. It's oh, stunning. All right. We got another promo and another modern staple here. This is Celestial Colonnade, the promo version. Uh, I believe it's just the, pr uh, is it the pre-release version? I'm not sure. It doesn't have the date on it, but it does have uh, so that the, the Wooberg stamp in the text box. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is another really good man land for uh, control decks. So we saw Tamiya, we saw um, 
cryptic command this is one of the game ending kind of cards for the deck uh, which is a difficult one to deal with unless you have instant speed creature removal uh, so celestial colonnade does become a 4-4 uh, white and blue elemental creature with flying and vigilance that vigilance is really key because it means you don't have to tap it you don't have to lose that mana uh, and you can utilize it later for a counter spell whatever you might need uh, and so late in the game, it's very clear that this is the way to win. Uh, you see that a lot in the modern format. If you do play control decks, uh, this is certainly a good one. Um, and again, the art here is just stunning. I love these promo versions. I love alternate arts, as you guys know. This is no different. And finally, our very last card is the original Time Spiral version of Flagstones of Trocare. Uh, just a really interesting card, truthfully. It's a legendary land, taps for white. Uh, when it's put into your graveyard from play, you can search your library for a planes card and put it into your uh, put it into play tapped if you do shuffle your deck. Uh, there's some like combo-y potential with a card like this. There's a lot of ways you can start deck thinning with stuff like this. Um, but because it's a legendary land and it doesn't come into play tapped, you can only play one, but you get to tap it right away as well. There's a lot of benefits to a card like this. Uh, just a really fun card, honestly. Uh, there's a, a lot of mono white, I believe, that plays this card. Um, I got it because every time I go to build my my wife a deck, she wants to play white, which I get. Uh, but I never have like a lot of the land base because white is my least favorite uh, color. Uh, sorry for any white players out there. Um, so I uh, I really don't invest all that much into the mana base for white. Uh, normally I just throw some basics in there, maybe a couple fetches, that kind of thing. Um, and so I thought I'd do something a little bit different and hopefully build up her decks uh, a little bit. Uh, she loves Soul Sisters. It's like her favorite deck, uh, which is a modern deck. So anyway, guys, that is the next 12 cards that we are looking at this week. Let's Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys. So again, a little bit of everything from reserve list to promos to modern staples, all kinds of phenomenal things. I'm really excited for this week's uh, page. We will, of course, have the value and everything up here on the screen for you guys. You can take a peek at that. We're coming up close, I believe, on the $3,000 mark, and we're only like almost halfway there. So we're really putting some value into the binder with this, guys. I really do appreciate everybody watching. Please make sure if you have a new card that you picked up, a new deck that you're building, whatever it might be, share it down below. I would love to hear what you guys are collecting. It's a great way for us to share in this together. Uh, and it's just really fun to be able to collect together as a community. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Happy collecting.